the devil in new england by cotton mather from the wonders of the invisible world published sixteen ninety two this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the new englanders are a people of god settled in those which were once the devil's territories and it may easily be supposed that the devil was exceedingly disturbed when he perceived such a people here accomplishing the promise of old made unto our blessed jesus quote, that he should have the utmost parts of the earth for his possession End quote. There was not a greater uproar among the Ephesians when the gospel was first brought among them than there was among the powers of the air, after whom those Ephesians walked, when first the silver trumpets of the gospel here made the joyful sound. The devil, thus irritated, immediately tried all sorts of methods to overturn this poor plantation, and so much of the church, as was fled into this wilderness, immediately found the serpent cast out of his mouth a flood for the carrying of it away. I believe there never were more satanical devices used for the unsettling of any people under the sun than what have been employed for the extirpation of the vine which God has here planted, casting out the heathen and preparing a room for it, and causing it to take deep root and fill the land, so that it sent its boughs unto the Atlantic Sea eastward, and its branches unto the Connecticut River westward, and the hills were covered with the shadow thereof. But all those attempts of hell have hitherto been abortive. Many an Ebenezer has been erected unto the praise of God by his poor people here, and having obtained help from God, we continue to this day. Wherefore, the devil is now making one attempt more upon us, an attempt more difficult, more surprising, more snarled with unintelligible circumstances than any that we have hitherto encountered. An attempt so critical, we shall soon enjoy halcyon days with all the vultures of hell trodden under our feet. He has wanted his incarnate legions to persecute us, as the people of God have in other hemispheres been persecuted. He has therefore drawn forth his more spiritual ones to make an attack upon us. We have been advised by some credible Christians yet alive that a malefactor, accused of witchcraft as well as murder, and executed in this place more than forty years ago, did then give notice of an horrible plot against the country by witchcraft, and a foundation of witchcraft then laid, which if it were not seasonably discovered, would probably blow up and pull down all the churches in the country and we have now with horror seen the discovery of such a witchcraft an army of devils is horribly broke in upon the place which is the centre and after a sort the first-born of our english settlements and the houses of the good people there are filled with the doleful shrieks of their children and servants tormented by invisible hands with tortures altogether preternatural after the mischiefs there endeavoured, and since in part conquered, the terrible plague of evil angels hath made its progress into some other places, where other persons have been in like manner diabolically handled. These, our poor afflicted neighbours, quickly after they become infected and infested with these demons, arrive to a capacity of discerning those which they conceive the shapes of their troublers, and notwithstanding the great and just suspicion that the demons might impose the shapes of innocent persons in their spectral exhibitions upon the sufferers, which may perhaps prove no small part of the witch plot in the issue, yet many of the persons thus represented being in examined, several of them have been convicted of a very damnable witchcraft, yea, more than one-twenty have confessed that they have signed unto a book, which the devil showed them, and engaged in his hellish design of bewitching and ruining our land. We know not, at least I know not, how far the delusions of Satan may be interwoven into some circumstances of the confessions, but one would think, 
all the rules of understanding human affairs are at an end if after so many most voluntary harmonious confessions made by intelligent persons of all ages in sundry towns at several times we must not believe the main strokes wherein those confessions all agree especially when we have a thousand preternatural things every day before our eyes wherein the confessors do acknowledge their concernment and give demonstration of their being so concerned if the devils now can strike the minds of men with any poisons of so fine a composition and operation that scores of innocent people shall unite in confessions of a crime which we see actually committed it is a thing prodigious beyond the wonders of the former ages and it threatens no less than a sort of dissolution upon the world now by these confessions tis agreed that the devil has made a dreadful knot of witches in the country and by the help of witches has dreadfully increased that knot that these witches have driven a trade of commissioning their confederate spirits to do all sorts of mischiefs to the neighbors whereupon they have ensued such mischievous consequences upon the bodies and estates of the neighborhood as could not otherwise be accounted for yea that at prodigious witch meetings the wretches have proceeded so far as to concert and consult the methods of rooting out the christian religion from this country and setting up instead of it perhaps a more gross diabolism than ever the world saw before and yet it will be a thing little short of miracle if in so spread a business as this the devil should not get in some of his juggles to confound the discovery of all the rest End of The Devil in New England by Cotton Mather, an excerpt from The Wonders of the Invisible World, published 1692. Recorded by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana.